I'm joined now by Tim Jeans. He's the managing director of the British carrier Monarch. Tell us how you're affected by this. I mean, your, your main flight, your main center in terms of flights is Gatwick, also Luton and Manchester. That's right. And, and disruption on this scale is quite unprecedented. All flights today have been grounded. So for us, that's 70 flights grounded, 10,000 passengers, many of whom are, are stuck down route in, in the Canary Islands, for example, with very few alternatives to get back to the UK. So huge disruption. And the, and the difficulty is nobody knows, as your, your colleague said, when this is going to clear and when we'll be able to start flying again. Well, what are you able to say to those passengers? At the moment, the only thing we can do is to say, keep watching our website. We'll update our website again at 6 o'clock this evening after the next advisory from National Air Traffic in the UK. We're entirely, as other airlines are, governed by what National Air Traffic say to us. And then we'll keep updating our website. And from then, we'll be able to mount a new program of flying as soon as airspace clears and start moving people back and to and from the UK. So you're able to, basically, since everyone is in the same boat, all you can really do to say is say to people, we'll carry you when we can but not before, uh, yeah. up to the air traffic controllers. Absolutely. We're entirely in their hands, and we can only go when they say to go. It's not like you can rebook them on another airline, you know, like uh, when there's a strike or something. Well, that's the problem, and many, many of the flights are full at this time of year because people are coming back after the Easter break. So reaccommodating people um, is not going to be difficult. So for people watching this overseas, if you like, in continental Europe or elsewhere, I'd urge patience because it may be that we're not going to be able to get you back tomorrow or the next day because of the difficulty of reaccommodating people on full flights. You were watching uh, that uh, report we had from Mary Ramos there and the, the, the ash cloud, the progress of the ash cloud, um, and nodding wisely and, and saying that actually it might bounce back from Scandinavia towards the British Isles perhaps in the next day or so. I mean, this is going to be a big problem for some time then. It could be. It certainly could ripple into tomorrow. I have to say I wouldn't be as optimistic as my colleagues in Cathay Pacific that they will be able to get their aircraft onto the ground at Heathrow tomorrow morning because... Well, they've diverted some to Frankfurt, so perhaps what's, that's what they have in mind. That's possibly I indeed what will happen. But at the moment, it's very difficult even to dis think about dispatching aircraft from any airport until such time as we, com we can be confident that they a, can land at their destination airport anywhere in the world, but particularly in northern Europe, and, and of course, equally importantly, get the, the aircraft and the crews back to the, the operating base, which for us is in the UK. Do you imagine that this uh, cloud is going to affect I mean, your operations going into, into further into, into continental Europe to the, to the southeast of the UK? Yes, that's, that's, that's the problem. We did initially think, we were advised that there was going to be this ash cloud coming and would potentially only affect northern airports, so Manchester and north thereof. Um, but now we've seen it come into the south and it now looks, because of the anticyclonic nature of the weather system, as if it may remain uh, at least st so not no, stationary, it will, it will come stationary, back. Because it's anticyclonic, therefore it doesn't move very much. It is could it, come back across the UK in, an, in, in, a, in, an anti in a clockwise flow and may be around not just for today, but also tomorrow and even into the weekend. This is going to cost you a lot of money, isn't it, ultimately, as an airline? This is going to dent your profits at a difficult time. Absolutely. This is the last thing you need at a peak travel time to have disruption of, of, on this scale, which um, is quite unique, and, and, and certainly just the logistics, never mind the money, we'll worry about the money afterwards, but just the logistics of looking after our passengers, providing them with information, and then getting them to their destination, that's our number one priority at the moment, because uh, overriding all of this, it's safety. We've got to stay safe and, and, and not be uh, pushing the boundaries when a problem which is known to cause difficulty for air transport um, manifesting itself in the way that it is.